right, good evening, church. It is time once again for our midweek update and uh, time we get to catch up on a few things going on around the church and have a little devotional time together. Uh, and uh, I'm glad to be here with you this evening. Brother Scott's on vacation. Uh, he was gone this past Sunday and uh, he will be back with us uh, this coming Sunday. And uh, so we're looking forward to having him back and uh, thankful that he's getting a chance to have some much needed uh, rest and relaxation this week. I had a great Sunday this past Sunday. I had 124 in attendance, and uh, it was just really good uh, time to be together, to worship the Lord together, and uh, very glad uh, just to have the opportunity to do that, to worship with our, our brothers and sisters. Even if we are doing it with masks and socially distanced and all that, it's so good to be together and, uh, and to have church together. Um, we are offering uh, of uh, $11,113, fell just a bit shy of our weekly budget, but it's very close, and so we're thankful. Uh, for that. Uh, a couple of announcements. Tonight begins our men's Bible study. We'll be uh, meeting at 615 in the dining hall of the multi-purpose building. As you're watching this, it's probably about the time that that's going on, um, but you know you can certainly be here next week or just run on over and, and join us. We'll be over in the multi-purpose building over in the dining hall uh, about 615 tonight. Uh, this coming Sunday, there will be a wedding shower for Britt and Cassie Driggers uh, from 2 o'clock to 4 o'clock in the afternoon, so uh, don't, don't forget that. Um, they got married recently, and so our church is putting a wedding shower uh, together for them uh, to, to bless them. Uh, also, this past Sunday, I was the first Sunday with my new guitar, and I am so thankful for everyone who uh, has who's donated to help cover the cost of that. As many of you know, uh, two of my guitars were stolen from the church uh, a couple weeks ago, and so now I have this nice new replacement guitar. This is it right here. It's a Taylor 214 CE. Uh, which means cutaway electric. Uh, it's an electric, acoustic electric guitar. Uh, has a Sitka spruce top and uh, rosewood on the sides with white binding and a uh, nice pickup in it, the E2 pickup. And we're just uh, very, very blessed to have it. It's got a great sound to it. And um, so I'm very thankful to have uh, this new guitar. And I'm so thankful for everyone who has helped to cover the cost of replacing that and, uh, and, and so that I can continue leading worship in our church in spite of you know, the theft that went on. Uh, and do pray for whoever it was that was involved in that, uh, that, uh, so that God will somehow or another get a hold of them and uh, turn their life around and truly, truly show, show them what grace is all about. All right, in our prayer time today, uh, please continue to remember Jimmy Driggers. Um, he's really struggled. This has been a long, long journey uh, for Jimmy and Lisa both and uh, for all the Driggers family. And uh, he's uh, improving very, very slowly. They're still kind of going the right direction, but uh, very, very small steps. And he needs to pass the swallow test. That's the big hurdle that's ahead of him right now. He just can't swallow. And um, so they've been doing electrostimulation uh, to try to jumpstart those muscles to work again. So we definitely need to be praying uh, for Jimmy. Uh, Warren Black has been in the hospital. Uh, he's home now and he's recovering. And uh, so continue, uh, continue praying for him. There's several, several more on our list. So that, uh, that list is going to come up on your screen here now. Uh, please take a moment to look these over and pray for them and, and really do that. Um, even if you need to pause the video for a moment, take the time. Uh, this, is, this is our first line of, of offense, not even defense. It's our first line of defense, but it's our first line of offense as well, is to be able to pray for one another. So I encourage you to take the time right now to go ahead and spend time praying for each and every one of these and, and the people and situations that are on, on these lists that are coming up.
Okay, continuing on, our four-year remodel committee met last week, and we've begun the research phase of getting started. So we've begun to get the proceedings underway to begin to get started, is what we've done. Um, it's going to take some time to meet with all the necessary people to get a good idea of exactly what is possible within our desired budget. Um, but please pray that we will be able to get uh, the entry to our sanctuary updated and create a very inviting atmosphere that's warm, uh, that's, that's in conducive to fellowship, and, and makes that space something that welcomes both our church family and guests as they come in and makes them feel at home and uh, want to hang around and even visit with people and fellowship because it's those fellowship areas in a church where relationships are built uh, across membership and, and across the across the board there and we definitely want to have a good uh, fellowship space right in the front of our church when people come in uh, rather than just sort of hallways that's that's what we're seeking is a, a space for people to be able to gather to get to see to meet we, with each other, to uh, fellowship together. And even when you're inviting someone, you know, a guest to come in, say, hey, I'll meet you at this spot. And those are the things that we're after uh, with our foyer. So pray that that goes very well. All right, grab your Bibles now. It's time for a word from the Word. And uh, we're going to be talking about some sweet assurance. All right, if you have your Bibles in hand, we're going to talk about sweet assurance tonight. There's a lot of uncertainty these days, and that's I suppose if we were to use a word of the day, uh, it, that that may be the word, uncertainty. Just people don't know. Uh, we have been blessed in my generation and in the generations before. We've been blessed to live in a peaceful, wonderful, free country that for the last few centuries has been a bastion of Christianity and love for Jesus Christ. It's been so good to live in such a time. We have been blessed beyond all measure to have a country like that in which we can live. However, when you look at the history of mankind, such a time and place are by far the exception to the rule, not the, not the rule itself. The world has seen much more strife and war than it has peace. And it's been, uh, it has seen governance by selfish and tyrannical men far more than it has godly and free. So... What we have in this great American experiment is, has been wonderful for, for a couple of centuries, um, but it is by far the exception to the rule. It's understandable then that seeing the end of this peace and the dependence upon Jesus in our, in our world, that it could strike panic on those who've known nothing else. Um, however, the Lord will not have us to be to panic or run around screaming in fits of insanity, even uh, every time we hear of something that might threaten the free exercise of our faith that we've been so blessed to know. That's not, you know, this freedom that we have is wonderful, but it's not guaranteed, and it's not something that our faith is dependent upon. We don't have to say, well, if we don't have freedom, then we can't have faith. Well, that kind of goes the opposite direction of faith. Faith is faith whether you're free to exercise it or not. And uh, so, in fact, Jesus himself told us that things would not always be easy. Uh, John chapter 16, verses 1 through 4, Jesus is speaking and he says, I have spoken these things to you so that you will not fall away. They will put you out of the synagogues. Yes, the time is coming that whoever kills you will think that he is offering a service to God. They will do these things to you because they have not known the Father nor me. I have told you these things so that when the time comes, you may remember that I told you about them. So Jesus didn't mince any words here. He was serious. Um, he was warning the, his disciples at the time and future uh, followers of Christ that the world is not always going to be a nice place to live in, and the world is not always going to readily accept the gospel of Jesus Christ. In fact, more often it will be rejected. But in the same chapter, John 16, down in verse 33, Jesus said this, I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. So even when things are falling apart, when, when you live in a time where whoever th kills you thinks that he's serving, doing a service to God, 
Um, when you live in a, in a time like that, and there are people, maybe, maybe we don't have to face that for the most part here in the United States, but there are a lot of Christians who face death just because they, tr- they claim the name of Jesus. And that happens to this, at this very day um, over in other countries. And so when you live in a situation like that, and even if it gets to be like that here in the United States, Jesus said, I'm telling you all this ahead of time so you can have peace. How can we have peace in such a horrible time of struggle and fear? Well, the the reason we can have peace and the reason we can be of good cheer is because Jesus says, I have overcome the world. So our faith is in something that someone who is far beyond what this world has to offer. And in any threat this world can make totally falls at the feet of Jesus Christ. He is the one who is King of kings and Lord of lords. The worst they can do is take your life. And Jesus says, hey, I have saved you, and so if you step out of this body, you step into my presence and you win. So the worst they can do is make you win, and win maybe a little sooner. So if Jesus has overcome the world, why should we fret or worry? If Jesus lives in us, we have no cause for fear. And people are running around terrified to this day, right now, people are running around terrified of a vaccine for this pandemic because they think it could be the mark of the beast. And that honestly flabbergasts me. Uh, obviously, that you know they've not read the Bible um, if, or, or not studied it or not understood what the Bible says about the mark of the beast. But we need to realize the Lord has sealed us. Those who have put their faith and trust in Jesus Christ, the Bible says, are sealed under the day of redemption. And the mark of the beast cannot harm us. Uh, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 30 says, And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God in whom you are sealed for the day of redemption. So if we have put our faith and our trust in Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit has come and taken residence in our hearts, then we are sealed by the Holy Spirit to the day of redemption all the way through. Whether you believe in you know, a pre uh, wrath or pre-tribulation rapture, or if you believe in post-tribulation rapture, none of that really matters for this, because all the way to the day that Jesus Christ comes and sets foot on this earth, all the way through to eternity, if you have put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit dwells in you, you are sealed by that Holy Spirit to the day that Jesus Christ himself appears. There is no reason to fear. All right, the deception and delusion will come, all right? It's coming. That's, that's in, the, in the Bible, this deception and delusion. And people are afraid, well, what if I get deceived? What, what, if, this, what if this virus really is something that, you know, or this, this um, vaccine that's out there for this virus is actually the government's way of sneaking in, you know, the, the Antichrist's rule and reign, all right? Yeah, there is a deception coming, but listen to what the Bible says. Those who are saved by the blood of Jesus Christ and who have rejected him, uh, or the, who have not rejected Jesus, th- they will not be deceived. But the deception will come on those who are not saved by the blood of Jesus and who have rejected him. Second Thessalonians 2 verses 8 through 12 says, Then the lawless one will be revealed, whom the Lord will consume with the breath of his mouth. So right there he's telling you this lawless one that's coming, the Antichrist that's coming, the Lord's going to defeat him. So we don't even have to worry about him. But he will appear, um, and the Lord will consume with the breath of his mouth and destroy with the brightness of his presence, even him whose coming is in accordance with the working of Satan, with all his power and the signs and false wonders, and with all deception of unrighteousness among those who perish, because they did not receive the love for the truth that they might be saved. Therefore, God will send them a strong delusion that they should believe the lie, that they all might be condemned who did not believe the truth but had pleasure in unrighteousness. So there is a day coming when God himself will say, okay, that's enough. I, you have had all the opportunities you're going to have. Now you're going to believe the lie. You're, the, you're choosing this lie. All right, now you don't have a choice. 
and I'm going to I'm going to deceive you. I'm going to make sure that you're deceived because you have you stand condemned before me, and there is no no longer a chance for redemption. But that is not for those who put their faith and trust in Jesus Christ. That delusion is for the lost who have ultimately rejected Christ and actually rejected Him to the point that they now stand condemned before God. It's not something that's going to happen by accident. Okay. All right, not, no one is going to be accidentally re- uh, deceived. This is coming as a command from God. Plus, Matthew indicates that, the, that deceiving the elect children of God is actually impossible. Matthew 24, 24, he says, For false Christs and false prophets will rise and show great signs and wonders to deceive, if possible, even the elect. So these signs and wonders that these false prophets are going to do are going to be so amazing that if it were possible to deceive those who have put their faith and trust in Jesus Christ, even they could be fooled by it because the signs and wonders are so good. But there's that qualification, if it were possible, and that indicates then that even though these signs and wonders these guys are doing are so amazing that it's just not possible to deceive those who are sealed in Jesus Christ because you have the Holy Spirit in you testifying to you, telling you, no, this is not real. This is not right. So this is not something that's going to happen accidentally. It's not something that's going to sneak up on people. When people choose the mark of the beast, it will be a conscious choice. It will be a a determination on their part to reject Jesus Christ as their Savior and Lord and put their faith and their trust in the Antichrist and thereby take his name upon their body saying, I put my faith in him and I reject Jesus. It's on purpose and it is not a deception you know, that the saved can be, can can fall into, this is something that is done intentionally, and it's not going to be in, snuck into your body through a vaccine. It cannot be that way. That's not what the Bible says, all right? So, because Jesus rose from the grave, we who have placed our faith and trust in Him as our Savior have nothing to fear. No matter who is running the country or what is in the news, Jesus Christ is on his throne and no one will overcome him. Jesus is the King of kings and Lord of lords. He's more powerful than Satan. He's more powerful than all the demonic forces of hell combined. They all came against him all at once with all the sins of all mankind for all of history and all the future All of that was placed on the shoulders of Jesus Christ on the cross at Calvary. He was at his weakest. He was absolutely beyond human strength. He had been beaten within an inch of his life. Now he was hanging on a cross, slowly dying, and all the forces of hell were coming against Jesus to try to turn him, to deceive him, to hurt him, to kill him, to do whatever they could. And even at that, with all of that power that Satan could muster, Jesus Christ still was victorious and reigns today as the victorious King of Kings and Lord of Lords, and no one is going to overcome him. No one is going to overpower him. And that King, that Lord, that amazing God is the one who has saved the souls of those who put their faith and their trust in him. And his spirit is the one who lives inside of you. And that spirit is more powerful than any government, any power, anything Satan can put together. There is nothing that can harm the child of God beyond taking your life on this earth. And if that happens, you step into glory face to face with Jesus Christ victorious and power the power of sin the power of death and the power of hell fall at your feet and at the feet of Jesus Christ there is nothing that we have to fear because Jesus Christ overcame all of that on the cross and because he lives and reigns today John chapter 14 verses 18 through 21 says Jesus says I will not leave you fatherless I will come to you yet a little while and the world will see me no more but you will see me Because I live, you will live also. On that day, you will know that I am in my Father, and you are in me, and I am in you. He who has my commandments and keeps them is the one who loves me. And he who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I will love him and will reveal myself to him. And in Hebrews chapter 7, 
verses 23 through 25, it says, And the former priests were numerous because they were hindered from serving because of death. So the, the priests of the Old Testament, they all died. They were human. And they were, there was many of them. But he, meaning Jesus, because he lives forever, has an everlasting priesthood. Therefore, he is able to save to the uttermost those who come to God through him because he at all times lives to make intercession for them. So Jesus Christ is alive. He is King of kings and Lord of lords, and he is personally involved in your life making intercession to our God, our Father, for you, if you have put your faith and your trust in Jesus Christ and His Holy Spirit has come in and has indwelling in your heart and has sealed you under the day of redemption, you have Jesus Christ, the creator of all the universe, who is interceding personally for you on a daily basis with the throne of God. What can you possibly fear? There is no reason to be afraid, no matter what's in the news and no matter what the president may do or the former president may have done or the Congress may do or somebody in some other country may do. None of that is more powerful than the God who lives in you and who is interceding for you, assuming you have put your faith and your trust in Jesus Christ. Now, those who have not put their faith and trust in Jesus have every reason to fear. But when we have trusted Christ as our Savior, there is no room for fear because we have the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Things may not always be the same in America. We are not promised freedom. We are not promised peace in this world. In fact, America's history has not always been peaceful. There have been world wars that have threatened the very fabric of our society. Things have not always been as peaceful as they are. But even in those times, we can have peace in our hearts in the midst of anything the world can throw at us. And here's what Jesus said about it. John chapter 14, verse 27. Jesus said, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. You know, it's probably never been stated better than in an old hymn, not that old, but it's been around for a little while. It was written by Bill and Gloria Gaither, and it's called Because He Lives. Why don't we sing that together? What a beautiful message in the hymn, Because He Lives. God sent His Son. God sent His Son. They called Him Jesus. He came to love, heal, and forgive. He lived and died to buy my pardon. An empty grave is there to prove my Savior lives. Because He lives, I can face tomorrow. Because He lives, all fear is gone. Because I know. And life is worth the living just because He lives. And then one day, and then one day, I'll cross the river, I'll fight life's fight no more with pain. And then as death, gives way to victory I'll see the lights of glory and I'll know He reigns because He lives 
I can face tomorrow because he lives. All fear is gone because I know he holds the future and life is worth 